Hello everyone. Today we are going to look at a little deeper um, for uh, the vulnerability issues uh, in coding. Uh, specifically, we we'll look at input validation and sanitization. Um, why input validation and sanitizations? Uh, that is because uh, the input uh, is the source that any uh, specific uh, malicious uh, or uh, backdoor uh, attack can uh, initiate. Uh, <clears throat> so that is a very, very critical component in cybersecurity. Uh, we want to protect uh, our applications from a variety of attacks. Um, so, so we need to validate the inputs. And also, we need to clean that out. Uh, this is a very simple uh, example. Uh, enter your name and uh, we want to ask, uh, enter the AG. Uh, so uh, AG could be, uh, it depends on uh, the app application uh, domain, uh, the acceptable and, and permit, permittable, uh, the AG uh, may be uh, limited. If there is a, uh, any, uh, the application for labor or employment uh, for certain uh, fields. Let's say if there's a construction um, job, then of course, uh, very young, um, the, the young guys cannot uh, uh, work for construction. At the same time, uh, very old ones. Uh, that is because mainly, mainly because uh, it may hurt uh, uh, those people. So, uh, the unsecure coding may uh, be the result from uh, unsanitized user values or uh, unvalidated validated external resources. If your program wants to process some of the data that may automatically um, uh, fed from the external uh, sources, then before you process it, you have to uh, validate. And if there is some issue, then you have to sanitize it. Okay. So goal of uh, the coding is to make software packages uh, to function correctly. That is the, uh, mainly the first goal. Uh, and in addition to the functionality, uh, we need to include the additional uh, functionality so without having to make a major change in the code uh, in response to uh, situation uh, changes to make your system to be more uh, intelligently adaptable to um, uh, uh, the situation changes and also to improve the code functionalities by handling errors Improving functionalities, then we have to improve time complexities. Uh, we need to make uh, our program uh, respond uh, in certain um, the reasonable uh, time. Uh, and also, uh, the code needs to deal with the more capabil capabilities. Initially, we can make a uh, X number of capabilities, uh, but if our program eventually uh, to be more adaptable, then the program will be able to deal with more capabilities. If, if uh, our program falls short uh, some of the capabilities, then, then we need to handle it. There could be an exception, there could be an error. So exception handling is the key issue at least our uh, program needs to prepare something that may occur exceptionally. Possible vulner vulnerabilities occur when data is given by users. Data is fed into the function or modules. Data is returned from a function or modules. So if you, cons if you consider a function, then function is the module to process data process the data that is uh, fed into it. That's input data, right? 
input data needs to be the source of uh, or cause of vulnerabilities. And after uh, the completion of uh, the function executions, then there may be a return value. Do we need to trust all uh, the values that are returned from a function or any uh, modules? That is not uh, uh, that what we need to do, right? Uh, we have to also, uh, because that uh, causes vulnerabilities, we have to validate it. Data is manipulated between lines in a code. Um, so uh, that also a possible the source. System call is supposed if any uh, uh, points of your uh, module so that it may uh, wants to contact. Uh, so to switch the context to the system, system level or kernel level, which uh, could have a much, much more power, powerful pri privileges. So if there is any system calls is posted, then uh, if you want to build the cybersecurity modules, then you have to take care of it and put more monitorings on the system calls until the system uh, execution is complete. Uh, Sub-process also, same thing. On OS command and query expression is post. So given a functionality, so for example, the sorting, ordering, then uh, we can do simple ordering by using uh, uh, the method uh, sort, right? Sort is, is a method, we can use this. This could be okay for uh, the integers. Capability improvement is, can you make it for not only integers, but uh, floating points? What mixture of uh, all the numbers we should do? Our program needs to be um, not only the secured, but also intelligent, right? Uh, this is a little bit uh, toward the intelligences. Uh, additional functionalities is um, the given data set is not all the numbers at the same level within the list. Next could be well, some elements uh, is another list. So there is an inner list and outer list, or so-called the nested list. How can we make our uh, the program to be adaptive, adaptive to the new situation like this? Okay, so uh, this is a simple uh, Python code to do that. By the way, we are going to uh, practice this on um, Google Notebook. So take, we make a, a simple uh, the function which takes data and then data, because it is a list, so we need to look at each element in the list and um, if this list is an inner uh, a list, I mean nested list case, then are we going to, in other words, are we going to make a, uh, how can we order this? There may, there may be many different ways that we could do, right? Uh, depending upon your application uh, requirements. Uh, one scenario may be, uh, any, uh, the maximum number will represent uh, that uh, inner list. So in this case, 12, in this case, 11, in this case, uh, number eight. Or any smallest number may represent the, that inner list. Or maybe uh, average of those, or maybe uh, total number. Uh, total number represents uh, uh, that ones. For example, if we see uh, any um, the sales uh, power, then uh, one branch uh, had these, these many uh, the amount of amount of uh, uh, the sales and the other branch uh, the, the other uh, sale number and, and so on and so forth then uh, are we going to uh, the sort uh, uh, the selling points uh, uh, among 
the branch stores, then of course we need to sum them up, right? Uh, this specific example, yes, uh, we do sum, sum and append. And then we make a new list. Once we have a new list, then we can call the method. Method, the sort, um, that can associate it with the end list. More things is that uh, not only the list itself, but what if we have uh, a dictionary formats? Let's say it's a store uh, Dobbs Ferry brand, br uh, uh, branch. This is Yonkers branch. This is White Plains br uh, branch. This is a Manhattan branch. Uh, we can think of this, uh, the cells uh, power, uh, but given data, data type is not always uniform. The input is not uniform, right? But are we going to enforce to the operator saying, hey, uh, change your data before you uh, use my systems? Uh, that may be a good idea, but uh, it's not really uh, optimistic. That is not ideal. Uh, what if our software packages can be adaptive to uh, whatever the data comes in, uh, so it is uh, improved, the capabilities? But at the same time, we have to make uh, sure the input data uh, doesn't create any vulnerabilities within our system. So uh, ready to attack, data modification attacks. Uh, the recall example one that the number here examples is, uh, this, by the way, this, uh, the the book that I wrote uh, a couple of years ago, uh, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, you can simply see here. Um, the when the function auth sort, this is the function, right? Auth sort is called after the data, data set three received is sorted. One or more data element may be modified before it is returned. So uh, this is this is the order, uh, the function that we looked at uh, the previous. But above here, it could be something changed. See here, there's a modification. Datum plus one, two, three. We do not know, right? This is a function call. We are handling this function, but inside, we simply call this function and we give our sanitized value. And when you return that value, unless we do send, uh, the validate the returning value, we do not know, right? Uh, because this is a black box. How do you know if this is uh, okay to us? So um, how do you know data has been modified? You may see the difference between the with or without the line one or two above, uh, one or two above, so maybe, yeah. So I have comments here. Uh, this is a replace it with the key and value pair, data modification on the key elements. If um, so, that is inserted there, and the return values. Um, so, with the insertion or without insertion, then could be different, right? Uh, but anyway, to handle this, uh, basically, we need to we need to include exception handling, which will come next from next week. Uh, next uh, couple of weeks, we'll look at uh, exception handling, which is a really great great uh, tool. Uh, that needs to be included in most of uh, the Python uh, codings. Um, I believe you guys uh, learned some of the exception handlings. So when you, uh, if we don't, then uh, you can um, get that uh, concept and and skills in coding here uh, from this class. That's fine, right? So uh, this is um, the basically uh, a simple. Um, the concept learning. You can take this concept learning uh, maybe several hours to understand fully. I wish you could do that. Okay, please do so uh, to save time. Because anyway, this is a recording. I, I don't think it's a good idea uh, to uh, idle uh, my recordings uh, a couple of hours until you guys can understand. But rather, I'll make it condensed, but at your side, you can stop these recordings playing and then take your time and make sure you understand. 
unless otherwise you can rewind it uh, and and replay uh, you can go slowly slowly it may take uh, several hours but anyway right now this is um, um, the notebook Google uh, Python notebooks so lab finally here uh, this for input validation and sanitizations uh, the part one and part two is kind of validations and part three the sanitization we may do this later not today uh, but we'll do some of the coding practice practices uh, for part one and part two Goal, uh, by the end of this lab, you will be able to design a way of input validation and sanitizations, and also will be able to tune the Im import, implemented the cyber system for secure input and sanitizations. So before you go, um, if you do not know yet, probably most of you guys uh, uh, do not know or have not practiced, practiced this, but this is uh, another uh, very very important concept uh, regular expression uh, when you deal with the strings string manipulations uh, not only in Python uh, all all types of uh, uh, programming languages um, regular expression is is uh, one of uh, uh, the major concept that you understand so if you click this then you may be able to go that uh, uh, the exercises practices Python uh, reg X uh, regular regular expression reg X or regular expression is a sequence of characters that perform a search pattern um, in Python we call it re okay re uh, regular expression re can be used to, to check if a string contains a specified search patterns so we want to make sure that uh, input data is is valid, okay? So for example, uh, the homework assignments, you guys have homework assignments at the end, then uh, see here, homework problems, uh, sample running. So write, write a Python code to identify email or web URL. So one uh, program needs to deal with the email or web uh, URL from user input. The output will tell whether it is a legal email or legal URL, if not illegal, or closer to email or URL expression. So your program says enter your email or URL. So jyun at mostdu, then uh, your program needs to return jyun at mostdu is a legal email. And similarly, uh, jyun at yyy.000, then that email is a near email expression, but it is not in this top level uh, domain, not in top level domain. It could, we expect it is .com, .edu, .net, and so on and so forth. If you enter 123.567.jun at mercy.y.com, then that is a legal email, right? Um, according to the idea here is this. We look at this top level domain, first of all. And also we need to see if the user input data has at sign. If it is at sign, then it could be the email. If there is no at sign but dot notations, then it could be here, yeah, dot notation, then it could be uh, a URL, right? So much that you do, that is a legal, ER, uh, uh, legal URL. Um, this is illegal, illegal email because that's underscore. Underscore is not allowed. Let's assume underscore is not allowed, then you need to say that is not. Right? That's, uh, for example, uh, email patterns. This is a, a regular expression. Uh, so I want you to read how this regular expression works. Uh, See, so a plus sign and at. At is somewhere in your email. And then uh, before there's a prefix the prefix could be uh, a through Z uppercase lowercase or any number uh, I think underscore is fine and then dot sign uh, plus and minus 
uh, that could be multiple times. And after the at sign, after the at sign, there is your name could have underscore, but your organization should not have underscore, as you can see here. Okay. So you need to check that. And then validation email, I gave you uh, the function and top level domains given why I have top this, this, uh, the symbols for the top uh, level domain that is from this uh, uh, Wikipedia. And then user string, you can take um, either email or URL from user. From this point, you need to by calling this, by using this email pattern or top level domain, so that you, your program needs to return like this. So this is homework assignments. Before we do that, uh, let's do our work. Software completeness. Before beginning to see the software vulnerabilities, uh, review a few uh, simple coding list. So we have a list of data to sort. Then this is a data list. And if you want to, and, and then this data list is, is a list in Python. See here, square bracket, open and close. So that this variable, list variable, contains those values. Because this is a list, we can invoke the method called sort. Then, then it'll do that, right? So if we do this, then So must be something has been done, right? So how how to see the, the sorted list? By assigning the statements, for example, in number five to variable to print variables or print the original list, which one could be the way that you could do. If you want to see uh, assigning this to a new uh, variable and see that once, then what happens? Nothing. Once you call, once you invoke sort method, if you assign it to a new variable, that new variable will be, un will be empty. This is a little bit of the coding tip, right? For example, we, if we do this, if we don't do real uh, I mean, testing on the computer, but um, simply this is given list, and this is the next statement. And if the question is, what is a new list? Then you need to say none, OK? What if you simply print the original variable? Then you can see it. So this is sorts, um, sort element in itself, the list, and then it that, that variable remains the same. Only the element in the list is, is ordered. OK? So sort method change myself. That it, that, that's what uh, this sort uh, method could do. So that is the behavior of this uh, the method sort. It could be uh, not the case, uh, for example, if we see append, then it appends. Append is, yeah, append is, is something different. Append is the same thing as a sort. Yeah, anyway, that's that. And what if a sorted list is assigned to itself? So sort, yeah, that's what it is, right? I explained that. Sorting nested ones. If you have these nested ones and sort, then it sort, um, these original ones, and that is sorted, then uh, you look at the first element only in that nested ones. So first element, the small first elements 
comes next which which one's uh, next uh, smallest first element in the list there's a nine the next one is 12. So that is uh, default sorting for the nested uh, list if we want to change it saying that i want to uh, make a sum like i said uh, we have uh, several uh, the branch uh, retail stores and each branch uh, retail store retail stores has a number of uh, uh, sales and if i want to see uh, the sales power of each uh, branch of uh, uh, the stores then then we need to sum them up Right, that is this. So if we do that, then uh, we sum them up. We do, let's say 20, this one, the first, uh, this uh, 20, which ones? Yeah, this is the smallest, next one is that and, and that, in that order. This small uh, input validations for um, the software and and we can go further. Uh, whitelist validations only allow data that matches a predefined set of acceptable value or patterns. For example, a username field allow only alphanumeric characters and a specific length. Then we need to set up, for example, this is our, it could be uh, A through Z, and then some number underscore but it should repeat uh, at least three times or at the longest 20 times then that is our val valid username so i put here i want to do let's say uh comment this out so run this, the valid usernames. Oh, I have to run this first and then run that. Then it is true, right? If I, if I t take this out and run, the next one is true. And if I do this, run, this is not true, that is false. That is because this number of uh, the lowercase of alphabets, uh, uh, uppercase of alphabets from zero to nine and underscore, that should be at least three times of those repetitions uh, or at most two. So if we do here A underscore N, then that is true because we have A and N. What if we have seven? A underscore seven is it is a, a legal once? Yeah, it is a legal, right? Because the three times, including underscores. What if we have so many of those? That may be uh, longer than twenty, right? If we do that, then it should be false. Too long. That type of things it can be uh, validated by regular expression. Okay. Regular expression uh, within that uh, quote and unquote, and then carrot uh, says it starts with uh, this, and then end. Let's end the notations. So if you see here, so uh, the carrot means start with. Uh, so anything you put here, then it should start with the hello, right? So what is the end? It ends with the planet, okay? Um, the star plus question means a number of occurrences, number of occurrences. How many times that we have? Plus is one or more occurrences. So in our case, occurrence, uh, doesn't do here plus or, or minus, but somewhere here, do I have that? 
Maybe this is plus, I don't, this is just plus sign. It's not here. The occurrence is, is to that, and, and uh, this curly braces is exactly the specified number of occurrence. So that is our case, right? Exactly the number of, uh, what is the exact number of occurrences? Minimum three times, maximum 20 times. No, no lower than that, no more than that. That's what it is. So curly brace. This is a or a vertical bar. And yeah, dot means any character. Uh, backslash, there's a special characters if we have a special characters. Square bracket is a set of characters. So in our case, set of characters. This is a set of characters, any, any one of those. A through Z, lowercase, A through Z, uppercase, zero through nine, the number, and then underscore. Any, any one pick. How many times that we can pick? Three times minimum, 20 times maximum. Okay? I think that, that you understand now, right? And then caret in front means it starts with this. And then dollar sign at the end, it ends with this. We don't really uh, do much here, right? Uh, so, for example, if we say it end, it starts with A or Y, it ends with uh, N, then if we run this, and what if we have Q9. Oh, still true. oh, we have to run this. Run this first and run that. It is false because it didn't start uh, lowercase y. It, it didn't end uh, with n. What if we do low end? This is a lower y and run. Start with y and. But three times of this. What if we do two times of this? Change this to two times. And run this. Then there is true, right? It started with the N. That's what I said here. End with the N. N dollar sign. Carrot uh, Y. So that satisfied Y and N. In between, at least two of these characters. Two. When it comes to three, then this violates, right? Therefore, this will not be true, false. I believe you, un you understand this. Uh, so regular expression is a very, very handy. Uh, there's a special uh, sequence of those, and then sets, find all. So many of the functions also associated with it. And the next one is a length and uh, format checking. Ensure input data meets the specific length requirements and follows expected format. For example, checking that the password is between 8 and 20 characters long and contains a mix of letters and numbers. Then we can say valid it's given text to word, given a word, we need to return. Um, if it is not known, so we check the length uh, length should be greater than eight. The given pass the length of the given password should be less than twenty, greater than eight, and we have to match. We have a regular expression here, so it should be a through z, and number, um, at sign, pound sign, dollar sign, so on and so forth. That should be at least eight times, or, or lower than twenty times. If there is a password, then can say it is okay. So if we run this, we have to run this first to validate password, then that's true. But if we say lower than that, okay, then that should be false because it doesn't meet our requirements, at least eight. What if we do so long of this? Then it says still false because it's, long, it's too long. And the other one, Maybe within that, <clears throat> what if we have something 
Mercy Cyber, but somewhere here, uh, some special characters are not shown here. I think underscore, right? It's not here. So if we say, then that's the false. Once we, we remove this underscore, then that's false. Uh, that's true. If we put here underscore, and if we to say underscore there, run this first, and if we run, then it'll be true, right? So you can manipulate this. This regular expression, handling this regular expression, you can say, hey, this special character so that you can use other special characters to no, know, uh, you can make, you can do it, right? So what is the, what is the beauty of these things here? Some, some characters are allowed, some characters are not allowed. If you make your systems to be more protective from any brute force uh, password attack, then brute force password attackers uh, uses something uh, that may be applicable uh, in common, right? So you may uh, filter that out. Hey, I do not allow them to uh, some of the uh, most likely they use is um, like exclamation mark. So I, I do not use exclamation mark here. There are so many times they use exclamation mark, right? So I put here exc exclamation mark. I didn't change this because there is no exclamation. See what happens. If I do this, then there's a force, right? Because of this, so I can, so I can make my system, hey, hey, this is, I want to filter that out. To make it, if we use a regular expression, we can handle it. So simple, so quick, right? It's a beauty. Type checkings, uh, you can check if it is an integer and then range, some other range. This is, uh, this is relatively simple, right? We don't use any regular expression, but only simple codings. So that you can say 11 years old is not allowed to our uh, application domain. And then the other one is uh, boundary checkings, similar to that number, if like age uh, or test, test score, lower than 15, I mean, uh, greater than 15 and lower than or equal to 100, then that is accept, that score is accepted. That's fine. Or mandatory field validations. Uh, input says, um, this is a given field, field is not known, and input um, strip. Strip means uh, want to uh, remove all uh, the, the pre and post to uh, white space. Then, so look at this. If we run that and simply hit enter, then there is a force because only Nothing, right? And then homework assignments. All right. Uh, enjoy the, this practice. And um, I want to I wanted to make sure that your homework. See, this uh, notebook contains my lecture notes together with the homework assignments. Definitely, definitely, you have to uh, download this in that .py file. And then you have to remove all unnecessary uh, code blocks, text blocks. So I want you to submit only, only the coding list here. Okay, make sure that your submission should be this coding list with the, um, the including of your, um, the completion here, all right? Okay, thank you. I'll see you later.